So I have turned on the recording to this session. This is everything you always wanted to know about adaptive learning with Xerti, but we're afraid to ask. And I want to remind you all, uh, please, please come to the lightning talks today at 1030 Eastern. So uh, in about an hour and a quarter. And uh, there'll be all sorts of exciting stuff there. So uh, with that said, let me introduce Inga. Hello. And, ex and excuse my, my office mate. So Inga was a teacher. She's been a consultant for the government and in business. She has a business of her own in online learning. And she's been involved in Xerdi since 2009. So she's worked a lot with learning analytics and adaptive learning in that context in recent years. So uh, Inga, I turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, with a title like this, uh, we are almost 20 minutes further <laughs> when you have to pronounce it every time. Um, but the, the, the sentence, but where uh, we're afraid to ask, that means that you can ask whatever you want during the session. Um, maybe uh, uh, you can break in, uh, uh, Josh, if you want. But also we have Tom Reinders here, also from the Zerti project team, and he can answer your uh, questions in the chat. Um, but you have to uh, send them to uh, all attendees, then everybody can see it. Uh, so let's start uh, quickly. Uh, what we are going to do today is uh, go quickly over the uh, 30 uh, and adaptive learning part, uh, some technical things, and then go into some uh, examples. Um, yeah, uh, Josh introduced us already, so um, I will um, skip this. Um, can you put in the uh, chat uh, what kind of uh, 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 what you do in um, in your living? Uh, for um, are you teacher, instructional designer, uh, whatever? That we can have a, a bit of a um, to know who's in the session. And maybe Josh, you can tell me because I don't see the chat. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Chris Beach says he's a software developer at Unicon. Uh, I'm personally in leadership at LaunchSite. Uh, Dave Evelyn wishes everyone good morning and says nothing else. <laughs> uh, Christina Schweibert is instructional design at a community college in the States. Elisa is an educational technologist at Brock University in Canada. Jeffrey Jones is an ed tech specialist at Oregon uh, Health and Science University. Uh, Dave Elon reports he's now an instructional designer at Johnson University in the States. Okay, well, thank you. So uh, we have a very different public. Um, let's go on. Uh, this is a, um, a video from uh, Don McMillian. Um, I have to... I go on because it's going to play and then I hear the sound. Um, you get this learning object as well, so you can look uh, later into it and see this video. And uh, it's a bit the same um, message that uh, is given by uh, Dillard here in the cartoon. And that is that when you work with um, statistics and uh, learning analytics, um, you always have to ask what, I, what am I comparing? Um, because you can compare apples with pears and then you have a lousy comparison and you can do um, nothing with it. Um, so uh, think good what you want to see and what you want to co compare uh, with each other. And um, as you know, we uh, at the moment, I will skip those um, slides because you saw it uh, yesterday, uh, but it's in here that you can uh, see the whole picture. Um, uh, as we saw um, uh, yesterday, uh, you can use an LRS. So with XAPI, you uh, make all kinds of statements uh, from the work you do, and it could be in Moodle or in Sakai or whatever, uh, when it's uh, XA, uh, XAPI compliant. And you send all those statements to your uh, LRS, like you see here below. And um, all those uh, um, uh, statements are there in a big database. That's the uh, that's the LRS, and it could be very different things. For example, uh, Curtis he completed his lesson and he had a score of 100%. But Virginia, the NC answered one question and um, she did it wrong and she had zero percent. And Ellen had a question and she did it right. And uh, Zachary a few uh, lesson and uh, a video in a lesson. 
And all those uh, activities are uh, stored in the LRS, but also when do you start? When do you stop? Uh, uh, when do you um, start again? All those information is in the LRS. And if you look into the LRS, um, sorry, I have to find my, if you look into the LRS, you see all those statements are in a big list. And uh, I'm not a technician, uh, so I can do nothing with this. Uh, but if you have the, the right tools and you understand them, this, you can create wonderful dashboards and do all kinds of things with it. Uh, for example, adaptive learning, what we are going to look into later. Um, and here also, again, because you have so much statements and so much information, it's very important that uh, when you start with this whole process, you think through what do I want to see? What do I need? And I know from, uh, I was a, a teacher originally myself, and if they would ask me, what, what would you like to know? Then I would say everything. Because as a teacher, you, um, you think, uh, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, I want to see everything, but that's not possible. So we have to think through what do, do we need and what do we want to see? And when I am advising uh, organizations, uh, they uh, most of the time they think that they are going to use these statistics and these numbers for um, the what what a learner what grades he had or what his um, uh, to to yeah to 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 say okay you scored six or you scored ten. Um, but that's not why you want to use it. You want to use it to, um, to make the quality of your education better. So information like, okay, here's a video and everybody stopped at uh, uh, two seconds, uh, sorry, two minutes. There should be, there is something wrong with that video or um, they are not interested or something happened at uh, uh, the uh, two minutes. So that's information. Information for me as a teacher or as a developer to make the quality of my content better. And uh, that's a thing that also should be in the considerations in what kind of information do you need and what do you want to have presented. When we go for, to a few uh, examples, uh, for example, the Future Teacher Project, this was uh, a European uh, project that got uh, a grant and with four countries, uh, we, uh, or four organizations in four different countries, uh, we cr created this project. And it was to pr um, improve the digital, digital skills of teachers. And how did we do that? We created a thermometer. Uh, yeah, they, they, get, they go on a journey. And uh, so everything was in uh, terms of the journey. So they, we had a thermometer to, to measure the temperature, but it was not to measure the temperature, but to measure, okay, uh, where do you stand with your ICT skills? Uh, it was a questionnaire. And then we had a compass to see uh, where do you, uh, can you go now? And the compass was based on the thermometer um, so you had 40 questions and based on that uh, uh, questionnaire, you get, for example, the, the, a link to uh, working with video in your classroom because uh, the thermometer shows that you're a, a bit uh, um, behind on information around video in your classroom. Or it could also be uh, a link to uh, micro learning. If, if the phenomenon shows that there, were, there was a gap. And then um, uh, in, when I, uh, I am in that questionnaire, I get, uh, based on my answers, a set of links. Uh, but to do that, we had to develop something and we developed that into 30. So this is the project team from the different countries. Uh, this is the, the learning environment uh, we used for that. Uh, so behind those tiles, there is a Xerti object and behind the thermometer is the questionnaire compass is uh, what uh, we are saying that you best can do. And then we had the journeys, for example, micro learning. You could do that on basic level, intermediate level or advanced level based on the answers of your uh, thermometer. This is the list of quest questions, 40 uh, questions in the thermometer about all kinds of um, in, uh, 
subjects in ICT. And we base that on the Digi Digicom EDU framework from, from the European Union. Then uh, when you fill it in, you get this um, graph. And here I can see that my skills on social media are very good, but my uh, skills on quality in online courses is uh, zero. So um, here I have some information as a teacher, what I can do. So I go on to the next uh, image and this is in the compass. And the compass shows the same graph about my individual uh, results, but it shows also the, um, the average results of, of the, the times that I filled in the thermometer. Be uh, because this is a demo, uh, this is a bit strange, uh, the blue one. But what's also good is that I see, and that's below here, the average of everybody that was in this group and filled in the thermometer. So I can do this as an individual, but I can also use it for my organization to find out, okay, where are the experts and what should we do, uh, offer on uh, different courses on, to, um, to make the ICT skills better. Um, so this, uh, this is based on all the information that's in the LRS and comes back to 30. Uh, then when you go further into the compass, um, for example, I had um, uh, I answered the questions in the thermometer about formative assessments, and here I see uh, the results of everybody, and uh, the most of them are in the 50 to 60 percent uh, rate. Uh, my score is 50 percent, and I get the message here below: go to the formative assessment journey, and I have to do it on intermediate level. When I create this as a developer, um, I make the links. So I, I make this text and suggest, okay, based on that I have to 50% uh, of the score right, I go there, 75, I go there, and 100, I go there. And you can make levels as many as you want in this. So this is the base of uh, adaptive learning. And this is also in 30. Uh, how does it look on the, uh, for the developer side? Uh, this is the compass. And we have 19 different subjects that are in the thermometer. And based on the subjects, we create um, the compass. So this is the compass about self-assessment. I have here uh, three interaction blocks. And each interaction block um, pointed to another uh, learning module. The first one is to the basic one, the second one is to the intermediate, and the last one is to the advanced level. And here is uh, how that works. So the first interaction block, uh, I say, okay, based on your answers, you go to the basic level activities. And here, the, it's, it should be a score between, this is Dutch, but a score between zero and 33%. And you can imagine that the next one is between 33% and 66%. Um, so that's, that's the way uh, we do that in, uh, in, the, in the compass. Then you go to the formative assessment. So the link here, here below, when I click that, I come on this page when I'm logged in. And here I can do the, uh, the journey that I'm uh, pointed to. In this example, I go to the intermediate level excursion rubrics. This is a quick overview uh, how the Future Teacher project worked with uh, adaptive learning and with learning analytics. Um, I will go quickly to the next one. Uh, this is an example of the Suma College, and Suma College is a vocational uh, institute in the Netherlands. Um, and they just started last year with uh, the uh, adaptive learning and the adaptive content page. It's a special page where you gather that, gather that information. Uh, they started last year and they have a few pilots there. And this is an example of one of the pilots. Um, I will see if I have the... Uh, 
I will go to the the live example because that's better to see. Because I'm sharing my screen, uh, it's a bit slow. But this is the learning object in their own um, uh, look and feel. And you clicked uh, through it. It's about a uh, medic pedicure, uh, pedicure. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but you have a few um, videos and um, I'm clicking through it. A few um, examples of uh, exercises that you can do and you learn uh, all about this subject. Um, then at the end of a part, so I've learned now about the nerve in this case, it's Dutch, but uh, the nerves in your body, and I can answer a quiz here. So I will quickly enter this quiz. It's a pity, it's seven questions. So the last one. And my score is three from seven. And if I go to the next page, this is what they build in. And this is the adaptive content page. Uh, here I see the results of the test. My score is 33%. I see here what the others did. I don't see their names. And here says, okay, you didn't answer enough uh, questions, right? Click here to see the stuff, uh, the, the content again. In this case, they decided that you can click here to see the content again, but you can also go further if you think, okay, I know it's good enough. Um, so they use the adaptive content page in this way. This is the first step for them because there is um, a lot of um, uh, other things you can do in, uh, with the adaptive content page. I have another um, example, I'm looking for it. Um, this is an example we made uh, to show what kind of uh, things you can do with the adaptive content page. And um, I hope it's working because this morning it was broke. Just I'm sweating, you can't see that, that I'm sweating. Um, and this is the example. Um, and what I want to tell you is uh, that uh, if you use 30, you can add it very easily in your learning environment uh, with adding a link to the learning environment or adding it with uh, LTI or um, embed it uh, and the information will be uh, visible in the learning object itself. But it's also possible, and I showed that yesterday when you saw my presentation, to have a dashboard and that's on the uh, in your workspace where you create the content. But in this case, this is all content that you can add on your learning object. And you can use it for the adaptive learning, but uh, because we made it the way we made it, you can also use it for a poor man's dashboard. So uh, it is in Dutch, but I will walk you through it. So this is a quiz. Um, I'm going to answer the quiz. It's the capital of the Netherlands and the capital of France. Um, okay, my score is two out of two. I go to the next page and this is the opinion page. And here I can ask uh, questions that are not right or wrong, but a feeling. Uh, in this case, I uh, have all kinds of questions about using audio or video or uh, images in the group. So I will add some answers here. And this is uh, the score. So I see that it's, yeah, maybe on audio, I'm a bit worse, but the rest is okay. Um, and now we are going to the adaptive content page. Oh no, we have another question. This is an open answer question. And here I can answer um, a question uh, and you can use it for example, um, how do you feel about the, uh, this or this, or what do you think about that? And you can use the information that's gathered uh, in your classroom. And I hope it will show. It's a bit slow.
So I go on to the next page when that's possible. No, it isn't. Um, sure, we will wait a bit at the moment. I will try to refresh it. Something similar like this happened to Bill Gates a lot of time uh, ago when he was doing a presentation of the new windows. <laughs> So I will try if it did work out. I go to the first page of the adaptive content. Uh, um, it is, uh, I have to wait a bit, but here below will be um, uh, like this, a graph. Uh, so based on the quiz that I did about Paris and Amsterdam, I got my results here. So I see that my score was 100%. I had two out of two. There are 20. 20 times this is uh, filled in and I've scored between the 55th and uh, 100 points and based on this score we advise you to go to and then here I can add a link I didn't do that but this is an adaptive content page based on the end score of the quiz but I can also go and uh, have a, an adaptive content page based on a specific answer so in this case my answer is Amsterdam, what was the uh, capital of uh, the Netherlands? So it's Amsterdam. I have answered Amsterdam. That's okay. In this case, I use it as a poor man's dashboard because here I can see what the others answered. Um, and this was my answer and that was all right. I, as creator, decide if I only say, okay, this is all right, or I also give a link here to what's the next step they can do. And then you have adaptive learning. It's also possible that you have um, an overview uh, like we had in the thermometer and the compass uh, about my answers in an opinion page or the uh, average of all answers. In this case, I filled it in all the time. So those two are a bit the same, the green and the red one, but normally those are two different graphs. And also, again, here I can say, okay, uh, you can go to this or this or this to do that and that step. Um, it's also possible be, uh, to have an overview about um, when you have an opinion page, you can say um, there are 40 questions like we did in the thermometer, but they're based on 19 subjects. I can get with all the same information that we gather, gathered when we do the thermometer, um, I can pick out all the answers around video. And then here I have the answers around video. And below I have the answers around audio. And based on the answers around the subject video in the big questionnaire from 30 questions or 40 questions, I can pick this out and say, okay, for video, you can do this. For audio, you can do this. Um, the idea, I don't show this page because it's the same as the, uh, the one before, but you can order it a bit. So I can say uh, audio, but when I click on video, I see a video here. That's just another view of the page before. And this is the model answer. That's what I said, the open question. Um, what we do is we gather all the information that the students uh, are uh, writing there and I have here a list and I as a developer can say okay I want to see the group the name from the uh, person or the name of the group or uh, the date this so these are all views you can choose and I can also say I want only to see my own students uh, this, that the student can see their own answers or they can see the answers of everybody and um, yeah you can use that in different ways in your classroom and of course it's also possible to have an uh, an adaptive content page that's based on the total score of your learning object uh, you have a learning object and you have a quiz in there, a hotspot uh, uh, exercise, a category exercise, um, a video with interactive questions. All the scores of those uh, assignments in that learning object are uh, gathered and the, the score 
based on the total score of that learning object is going to show here. I'm not going to wait, but it's going to show here. Uh, and then, and this is a very uh, strong thing also from the adaptive content page. I can, uh, for example, get in the information of different learning objects. So if I have a course uh, uh, in math, for example, and I have 10 learning objects about 10 different subjects, in this uh, adaptive content page, I can show from every learning object the results. And so you can gather information of a whole course, of a whole curriculum or whatever you want in this adaptive content page. And what we are working on is that it's also possible because it's working with XAPI and the LRS, that it's not only from Xerti, but for example, that you also can get in the information from Moodle or from H5P, also uh, an, uh, an content authoring tool. Um, so all that information uh, could be added and you have uh, the results of everything in here. So it's not only connected to Xerti, but in the future, it's also uh, open to other programs. So this is the example I wanted to show you. Uh, I have one minute left. So if there are any questions left, because uh, I think there's a, there were a few questions in the chat. Josh, is there anything that I have to answer? Looks like, uh, looks like Tom is answering most of the questions. Um, um, there is one question from Chris Beach uh, regarding whether there's a demo Zerti site or would he have to host the demo himself? He's at Unicon. Um, you, you get this uh, learning object and I will, uh, this links are, will st stay in. The, uh, the first one not because that's to a live working uh, uh, situation, but the other two will be in and you can try them. And it's connected to our uh, installation. And the link to the example of the future teacher project, there you can um, sign up and there is an English part and you can uh, look into the phenometer and the compass and the, and the journeys in the English part. And then you can see how it works. Is that an answer on the question? Not really, but I answered. Oh, <laughs> fine. All right, it is 940. We should probably stop there. I want to say a big thank you to Inga and Tom for this presentation. Thanks to uh, all 14 of you for spending some time with us this morning. So uh, we're going into a very short break for about 10 minutes. Uh, the next session starts at 950. And uh, I want to just put in a plug for you guys to jump into the lightning talks at 1030. There are some, some very interesting topics that are out there. Um, including a preview of Dr. Chuck's new podcast, LearnerPrivacy.org, which should be pretty interesting. So thanks all for your time this morning. Thanks to Inga and Tom, and we will see you at some other sessions later on today. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye.